Um, this uh, is quite a special demo you're about to see. These are two Ford GPAs, so they are amphibious Jeeps. The typical quarter ton Jeep that you all know and love from the war. It's, um, these vehicles are built on exactly that chassis, um, but clearly they're uh, amphibious in their design and they'll go in the water. I'm going to hand over to Captain Nigel. He's uh, the owner of this vehicle and he'll tell you a bit more about it before we put it in the water. Thank you Ian and good morning everybody. Welcome to Maple Durham at War. It's very done this before so uh, we're going to see how it goes. So uh, hang on tight. As we enter the water, Nigel's uh, selected drive, and you'll see behind the propeller started to turn. And then he'll disengage the drive. The drive wheels, the drive wheels won't turn as we're in the water. And there we go. These vehicles often confused with the uh, well known Duck, the B U K W much larger vehicles um, made by GM. As I said earlier, these were made by Ford Motor Company. Here he goes with his trailer. Fingers crossed, everyone. This, this trailer thing is really is an experiment. We've not done it before. So these vehicles um, were intended for crossing rivers and uh, getting around beaches and the like. But as I said, the uh, much larger, more capable ducks uh, were much more favoured by the army. The duck, interestingly, almost never happened. Um, what happened was uh, a bunch of uh, army guys and a bunch of uh, navy guys said, be a good idea. They designed the uh, duck and uh, tested it and the Navy came along and said it's not a boat, we don't want it. The uh, Army came along and said it's not a truck, we don't want it, so nobody wanted it. And then um, one day storm blew up 
just off the east coast of America. Um, a Coast Guard clipper got uh, um, grounded on a sandbank and um, the uh, duck was in testing in the, in the area. So they took... Uh, And, uh, and from then on, everybody said, what a wonderful machine, and we must have them, and they, and they made a lot. And, uh, and then they moved on to looking at smaller vehicles like this one. Uh, the, the Jeeps, uh, because of the, you see they're quite low in the water, so in anything other than a, a light chop, were found in Brazil by a knife, brought back and uh, fully restored to the condition they're in today. Uh, and so many of them uh, Went to Russia. Like any boat, uh, the, uh, the way the propeller is set with the rod out. And that was his bilge pump working. Okay, it sounds like the trailer's taking some water, so uh, put your front axles in. Just check your front axles in, mate. So the problem there is Mike's not got his front axles in. And um, the important thing for, uh, for these vehicles is to get your front axles turning, because those are the front wheels that pull you up first. So now he's got front axles in. There you go. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. It's not that good. back into the river, but no, they're safe and sound back on dry land. And that one engages the capstan winch on the front. These vehicles are capable of self-recovering. They don't need a sitway to come out. You can come up anywhere. You just, uh, if you can see it on the front of the vehicle now that you're looking at it, that's the little round drum in, in the middle. That's the capstan winch. Ian's talking about the seaworthiness of these things. They designed them so that you, if you got in rough water, you could do a couple of things. There's a spray deck, which at the moment is folded back, and it's just by the windscreen, but you can fold that forward, same as on a duck, and that then gives you a extra six or eight inches at the front of the That operates some baffles in the side of the bow, and when that's closed, it's taking air from where our feet are, it goes forward, into the bow, then back through the radiator, and I would open here, and that would then be the air exhaust. So you've got two ways of putting air through the engine and the radiator, each in opposite directions, and you just choose which one's appropriate for the sea conditions that you're in at the time. I mentioned they have a mechanical bilge pump. That comes out by the, the hole just to my left, just where my hand is, there's a hole here, that's where the mechanical bilge pump comes out. We also put in two electric pumps as well, because if your engine was to stop for any reason while you're on the water, then you would not have a way of uh, pumping yourself out. So with some electric bilge pumps in, it just gives you that little bit of extra safety. That's a modern. This vehicle is 100% original, exactly as she was built, and uh, restored by Mike Stallwood of r, &R Services four years ago. Um, she's seen on the Thames a lot. We had Amphib here last year and uh, just got the Caversham Princess coming in she's going to moor up on the on the pier there to the to my left so we had amphib here and we had 60 amphibious vehicles all up on the mill pond directly in front of us now and of course the only way to get to the mill pond there's no vehicle bridge to get across so uh, we all come up from the river and it's the first time in the history of the estate that there's been any uh, vehicles on the island uh, and we had 60 of them. So, we're going to do another couple of... I'm going to get lined up on first because you need the first gear to pull yourself up the steep ramp. So I drop it into first just as we're approaching the slip. And engage the front axle so that we've got the front wheels turning. You don't normally have the wheels turning when you're in the water. That doesn't do anything for your forward motion, it just saps energy from the motor, stops it going to the propeller. So I'm going to sign off now and um, hand the mic back to Ian and we'll be coming out very shortly.
Can we uh, keep the slipway clear, please? Thank you.